Who loves tales of epic ancient adventures? Well, the Greeks definitely did, otherwise they wouldn't have left us with the only surviving accounts of Hanno the Navigator's African coastal expedition. This account from a Periplus estimated to be from the 5th century BC tells the story of Hanno and his fleet trying to explore the West African coast for the glory of Carthage through a series of short notes. Now, almost nothing is actually known about Hanno himself, as this is the only mention of him in the historical record, and was translated into Greek centuries afterwards, and the original Punic texts are now lost to time. Some say he was a king, an officer, an aristocrat, but his life details aren't really important here, so let's just get into the story. So Hanno starts his epic journey with 60 ships and 30,000 men and women, supposedly, and sailing off from Carthage to settle new cities and find new trade routes. After passing through the Straits of Gibraltar, he starts sailing down the African coast for two days. He then landed in a plane and found the city of Thymiaterium. Afterwards, he kept sailing and found some cliffs and set up an altar to their sea god. Then sailing for half a day, he came across a big overgrown marsh with elephants that the Romans didn't kill in a big arena yet, and other undisclosed wild beasts. Again sailing for another day along the coast, he settled five more cities, which I don't care enough about to mention by name. As he kept sailing, he came across a river called the Lyxis, and a tribe named the Lyxidae, and they became just the best of friends. To the north of them were an unnamed hostile tribe and some big mountains with a race of cave-dwelling mismatched shaped people who run faster than horses. So Hanno and the gang just chilled with the Lyxidae for a while before leaving and taking a few of them as interpreters. From here he sailed 12 days down a desert coast and reached an island in a bay where they settled an island, naming it Cern. Once again sailing, he comes across a river which leads to a lake, and after sailing to the end of the lake, some random tribe assaulted him with rocks, so they left. Sailing down the coast more, they found another river and went down it. This one was filled with crocodiles and hippopotami, so they left again and went back to Cern to regroup. After that, he sailed for another 12 days along the coast, but all the locals they encountered fled from them on site, and their Lixidae interpreters couldn't understand them. He then came across a bunch of forested mountain islands that they sailed around for two days. Eventually he came to a large river on the coast and saw large fires inland, then sailed five days until he reached a bay the interpreters called the Horn of the West, and in the bay he saw a large island with a lake connected to the sea, and in that lake another island where they landed. During the day the island was nothing but forest. But during the night, they heard pipes, cymbals, drums, and all kinds of rambunctious noises that made Hanno and the gang shit themselves, before their soothsayers said they should leave the island immediately. While sailing forward, he saw the mainland was covered in huge flames, making it impossible to land, and it kept sailing scared shitless for days with fire all across the land as they went. One fire seemed to be as high as the sky itself, which was revealed to be a mountain called the Chariot of the Gods. Sailing along the burning apocalypse coast for another three days, he came along another bay called the Horn of the South, and in this bay another island with another lake, and another lake in the island. On the lake island, they found a race of hairy savages named the Gorillae, and tried to capture some. They were unable to capture any of the men since they ran away and whipped rocks at Hanoang Gang. They were able to capture some of the women. But they kept biting and scratching, so they were killed and skinned. The pelts were brought back to Carthage, as this was the end of Hanno's journey, right after running out of supplies, and the text just ends here. Okay, okay, so first thing I want to add. So, this last tribe only threw rocks at them, would scratch and bite, were covered in hair, and presumably in West Africa. This sounds like they're describing chimpanzees. And the part about capturing the women. Now, typically when women are captured in an ancient raid, they don't have the best of fates, to say the least. So what I'm wondering, uh... Was Hanno gonna fuck the monkey? Now for the real world locations. I originally wanted to try and add my own hot takes on trying to see which in real life locations the text might be talking about, but most of my guesses were basically the same as the mainstream theories. So let's just see a few of the theories from real historians. The English translation of the text I use was from 1912 by Wilfred H. Schoff, who heavily cites Karl Muller for his geographic interpretations, and has this map of the journey. According to this one, after going through the Straits of Gibraltar, Hanno stops here and establishes what is now modern Medea in Morocco. 
eventually traveling to the Draw River, then traveling to, well, uh, he says Hearn Island, but I can't actually find any place by that name, but I'm gonna assume they mean Arguin or Tidra Island, since the bay they're in is commonly cited as a possible location. The river and lake he travels up is cited as the Bay Saint Jean. This one's a bit odd, since this is hardly much of either a lake or river, but sure. He then traveled to the Senegal River, where they saw the crocs and hippos, and the forested mountains were Cape Verde. A little odd as well, since this means he just traveled uh, a bit far westward into the ocean, but sure, why not? The next large river is cited as the Gambia, and the bay from the Horn of the West is the Basagos Islands. The Chariot of the Gods Mountain is cited as Mount Kakulima in modern-day Guinea, and the Horn of the South as Cherubo Island in Sierra Leone. This route and small variations of it is probably the most common interpretation of the story. Some try to argue that Hanno didn't actually get farther than southern Morocco, that is definitely the most boring interpretation, but you might be wondering, what about all the fire and terror that Hanno described? Well, one theory for the fire is that it was a large grass and forest fiber, maybe part of an annual dry season grass burning that many West Africans used to perform as part of clearing out the old dry vegetation. Some European observers during colonial times described these annual fires as quite big and a huge grandiose spectacle, and it's possible this one was just out of control. But many people also theorized these fires as a description of an active volcano. Well, Mount Kakulima uh, isn't a volcano, and West Africa isn't known for having many, so instead they propose Mount Cameroon being described. Which is exactly what Jérôme Cacopino would argue in his interpretation in 1943, where he thinks that Hanno is actually describing four different voyages, and they actually got as far as Mount Cameroon on his final voyage. And this would mean that the gorilla people described could possibly have been actual gorillas, Although personally, I doubt this version more, not just because of the distance, but also because, uh, I have a much harder time believing they wouldn't get obliterated by a tribe of fucking gorillas. So I believe the first version of only reaching around Guinea and Sierra Leone to be the most likely, but Pliny the Elder believed Hanno actually circumnavigated the entire continent, somehow. He also believes that the, uh, gorilla, chimpanzee, whatever pelts, that were brought back to Carthage actually remained there until Carthage was finally destroyed by the Romans many centuries later in the Third Punic War. And with that, this concludes this video, and if you found this tale entertaining in any way, then be sure to subscribe and like so I can shill myself into the algorithm. I'm out.